Okay. Are you already recording? I'm about to start right now, so here we go. Well, right. wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want to do a couple things real quick. Yeah. I want to tune my guitar and pour some whiskey. All right. Okay. I just opened up a, um, oh, you can't, Dogfish, 60 minute IPA. I got a single hop going. Perfect. Cheers. Cheers. What's, uh, what's the hat? What's that about? This is from our uh, Big Sky Community Theater play. Okay. Uh, the last one we did. Uh, wolves. Okay, guitar's in tune. Let me pour just a little bit of whiskey. It'll get me really talkative. Go. Cool. I will be right back. Good boy, buddy. Anything we need to prep before we get going? No, I'm just going to welcome the viewers and the listeners and the homebodies. Okay, um, you, got a, you got an intro? In and around Big Sky. This is our inaugural uh, radio Big Sky, tuned up in Big Sky episode one, uh, featuring Stumpy, where we uh, feature local musicians and sort of get the ins and outs of um, what they um uh, what they do, why they do it, enjoy it, and uh, get to hear some tracks. And we're gonna post these Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. So check us out on our schedule uh, on Instagram, at Radio Big Sky. That's another place to find us. Um, we are too badass that Facebook denied my request to open up a page. So anyway. Um, they, got, they got nervous? They got nervous, I guess. I don't know if they read the hat or if they, uh, looked at my former post but listeners here we go we got stumpy here most people know you as stumpy uh what about give us your full name middle name all that <laughs> my name is brian james stump james is that yes, a sir. family name or is that something your parents just kind of thought was cool or pulled out of a hat or what james is my father's uh no yes my father's christian name Okay. Brian is my dad's middle name. All right. Um, I think that's right. Any musicians yeah. in your family? I'm sorry? Any musicians in your family? Um, my uncle, who uh, just recently passed, he was a musician. Uh, my dad's cousin, Rob, is an incredible musician. Um, definitely all music fans. Um, my brother's a musician. I'm the... I'm the First to kind of do it professionally, though, as far as I know. Cool. Um, some say, like, we're all artists. You know, like, everybody's an artist. It's, it's, it's about finding out what that is and where that is. And I think what happens is we got these so many standards of, uh, you know, what art is supposed to be, whether it's music or graphic art or whatever it is, that we often say, I'm not an artist. I can't, I can't play music, um, which... I'm hoping things change with that, uh, you know, with people having a lot of time at home right now, maybe we get a bunch of new artists, whether it's musicians or, or, or painters or, or, or writers or whatever. So it's pretty cool. Um, so let's backtrack a little. Okay. Give us a brief uh, bio about how you ended up where you're sitting in that chair right now. <laughs> um, sure. Uh, so talk a little bit more about my family. Uh, my whole family is uh, South Jersey. You're, you're North Jersey, right? Yeah. Like North, Middle, Central, West Jersey. Two totally different states, it, North it, and South. It does, it does, you know, different sports fans. Yeah. Uh, um, what do you call it? Lingo, what's the right word I'm looking for? Um, yeah, it's, it's either like a Philly connection or a New York connection. Right. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of, you can see the, the Eagles helmet okay, right? Go Birds. 2017 World Champs, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so my folks moved from Jersey up to Vermont to be ski bumps. Cool. Um, that's where I was born and raised in Vermont. Um, I went to school at Penn State and then uh, working to, to be in the ski industry. I have a degree in recreation parks, tourism management. 
uh, the winter of 05, 06, I got an internship. That degree is like official title, right? Like I can go and log on to a university and, and Google that and that comes up or is that something you just made up? No, that's a real thing. And Penn State has one of the oldest and largest programs in, in parks and recreation. Um, and everything that I did with the electives with, with getting that degree was all related to skiing. I wanted to be in the industry. Um, so yeah, my senior year would have been 05, 06. And I got an internship at the Yellowstone Club. Um, that year was just awesome. Just snowed every day. 05, 06. 05, and uh, I went back to PA, finished up my last couple credits. And uh, the club offered me a job that next winter. And I've been here ever since. What was that initial job offering? Um, it was all in ski school. That that first, you know, the internship was doing admin stuff for ski school and uh, working for Kurt Fundeen, um, just a great guy, great guy to work for and with. And um, they offered me a job to do kind of events for the kids that next winter on top of doing the admin stuff. And uh, um, yeah, again, been here ever since. All types of different jobs all around town. Awesome. Um, that's how I ended up here. Behind you, there's like a huge guitar looking thing. That's uh, an upright bass there. Upright, stand up, upright, stand up. right lingo for that. I call an upright, stand up, double bass, people call it, which I don't totally understand, but uh, that's all synonymous, yeah. What else do you play besides that double bass, or is that double bass just merely uh, background? Oh, I play that thing, baby. I can play it. All right. Um, no, I play bass and I play bass guitar. So I'll back up even a little bit further. Uh, before college, I went to um, a vocational music program. Okay. Um, my last two years of high school would have been, you know, junior, senior year. Um, one of the only, to my knowledge, vocational music programs in the country. So I, um, I spent the last two years of high school basically learning jazz theory, composition, with a focus on jazz bass. So the bass is uh, really my first instrument, but when I moved out to Montana, really only had room in the car for one instrument. So I brought the six string, of course. Right. Um, and that's kind of taken over uh, my uh, focus the last 15 years. Okay, so we've got bass, we've yep. got guitar. Yep, that's it, <laughs> that's it. That's I try to sing. Um, but that's about it, yeah. All right. How about giving us a little flavor of one of those instruments right now? Sure. Um, yeah. Might as well do the guitar here. Um, yeah. I'll play, I'm going to start off with, uh, this is a, a jazz number. Um, that I learned in that school program. Still one of my favorite tunes to play. Um, this is uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim, a tune called Black Orpheus. It's from uh, the mid to late 70s when the jazz fusion movement happened where a lot of South American and Central American um, jazz guys were uh, incorporating bossa type of rhythms into um, traditional jazz music. Um, and it's stuff that I just love, super rhythmic, kind of complicated, but um, yeah. Cool, groovy. to practice before we do this. There it is. You want me to start that over? You got it, brother. Okay. Uh, here goes.
man. That's beautiful. Black Orpheus. Well, thank you. I feel yeah. like you could, um, I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like you could go anywhere in this town or wherever and like you could play that and people be grooving to it. Like it doesn't have to be at a jazz bar. It doesn't have to be at a, like a heavy metal place. It doesn't have to be at a rock and roll center or whatever, pop, whatever. Like yeah. that's a song that kind of encapsulizes like a lot of different theories there, a lot of different stuff going on. Well, I think that's what makes that fusion movement so enticing to me is the rhythm. And just has such a great rhythm and the melody's kind of built into it. Um, and it is, it's timeless. Yeah. Yeah. Love that tune. Timeless, that's a good way to say it. Um, you know, speaking of it, what, what what is it that like keeps you wanting to do jam? Like just jamming out. Like what is it what is it about music that is the it that keeps keeps you wanting to come back to it every day? I mean, you never it's you never figure it out, you right. know. It's never done. You never, you never mastered it. Um, there's still so much I want to do with my playing. It's so fun, you know, JJ, in the last couple of years, I'm doing it more and more and more and you get better and better just by getting reps. Right. Right. And you learn more and then it's more rewarding and it's, you know, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it and with music. And I think in a lot of things, you never just master it, you know, and some people do, a few people but music is just it's endless you know you can always do more and learn more and and just when you think you're really good at it you think you have some kind of uh talent or whatever you get together with a guy like obi-wan fabozi and he's just this next level you know and you're just trying to keep up with him and and you get with someone like that and you learn so much from him yeah just by being around him right you know and there's lots of people like that who you know, the different tiers based on your knowledge, your education, the time that you've done it. And, and people are five levels above me, you know, that I couldn't even play with. And, you know, someone like Kevin, who's a tier two, at least above me, right. You know, and you, and you see them do their thing and it's, it's exciting. It's like, Oh, I, I want to learn how to do that. You know, how can I figure that out? Well, that's uh, ironically, you bring that up. Uh, Obi-Wan Fabozzi is our, our guest next week. Nice. Uh, which brings me to like, I, I've seen you out and about in town with different people. Like, who are some of the people that you've collaborated with recently or in the, in the past years you've been here in Big Sky? Um, well, Benny Macht has been, uh, you know, my partner in this for about a decade now. And he's someone that when we first started getting together, he had just bought a mandolin with figuring out how to use yeah. it, you know, and Ben was just the homie. We hope to get so him. We got together, drink some whiskey, start playing. Yep. And that's grown and grown. Someone like Lauren Jackson, who I've been a fan of hers for years and years, we finally just in the last couple of years have started collaborating on a regular basis. Um, and that's another fun thing too about music. It's not necessarily someone being better or worse. Someone having a different approach, having different ideas. You know, and you get around different people. And, and that's so much fun because they have a totally different kind of view on how to do things or a different technique that you might not have thought of. Um, um, you know, someone like Xander, fellow Eagles fan, you know, he's a couple years younger than me and came to town a couple of years ago and just an absolute ripper. And, you know, he's got a different approach to it than I do, than Lauren does, than Kevin does. Um, but it's fun that it's not competitive, that we can all sit down, pour some whiskey and just share ideas. It's a lot of fun. And it's just, there's, it's endless. It's endless what you can learn about music. How about this? If you were, uh, you know, allowed to put in some sort of a virtual time machine or something, um, and you had the opportunity to collaborate with anyone, any musician, artist, whatever it may be in the world, who's the first person that comes to mind? Uh, the first people that come to mind off the top of my head are some of my favorite guitarists. Um, and the people that I've studied and looked up to and have listened to hours and hours on end. Um, you know, my heroes are, you know, Jerry Garcia, Frank Zappa, Jimi Hendrix. Right. Um, huge John Frusciante fan. You yeah. know, Red Hot Chili Peppers. W w you know, so I just love the Chili Peppers. I love his guitar work. It's so unique. It's so cool. Um, 
you know, my interest in music is definitely in the last 50 years, American music. That's what I listen to. That's what I enjoy. Um, Speaking of that, who, like right now, if I were to like go in your CD player. <laughs> what is that? A your, CD player? <laughs> back. Um, who would I find playing right now, maybe from this morning or this afternoon? Uh, in my Walkman right now is uh, uh, Marcus King Band. Is your Walkman yellow? Is it the <laughs> it's, it's, Yeah. I wish I had a boombox. Say that. I need to bring the boombox back. Say that again. Marcus who? Sorry. Marcus King. Marcus King. I think he did. I think his last release, which he did with Dan Arbach from uh, the Black Keys, I think it was a solo record. Yeah. But the Marcus King band, which is who he tours with, horn section, but he's, he's you know, virtuoso guitar player playing, you know, kind of a Southern rock jam kind of genre, just tons of energy, horns going, um, rock and rhythm section. Um, Kara and I got to see him in Fort Wayne, Indiana a couple years ago in a strip mall church. Oh, there you're going um, it was amazing because now I don't think we're going to get that opportunity. He's, 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 uh, he's kind of blowing up and uh, encourage everybody to check him out. He's amazing. Y'all right. y'all out there listening, watching, check out Marcus King. Yeah. Before we get into your second song, I got quick, um, quick little things I'm going to throw at you. First thing that comes to your, your, your mind type of thing. Um, if you could describe your sound in a metaphor, what would it be? In a metaphor? My music is like, bam. Party. Favorite it's party. Lyric, favorite lyric from a song. Of mine or of, of any? Any any yours or any anyone you listen to. Um <laughs> I don't really care about lyrics. Okay. You know, if if, if uh, because I can't think of anything off the top of my head, that would be my response. I don't care about lyrics. Yes. Right on. Who cares? More about the sound. Just rock. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite Disney soundtrack? <laughs> um, Robin Hood. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. So let's hear a second song you've got, you know, tuned up and ready to go um, and give our audience something, some Stumpy to listen to. By the way, you are on Sunday nights doing Stumpy Sunday still on Facebook. We're gonna keep the virtual Stumpy Sunday going until the neighbors complain. Um, that, this, this, JJ was season number eight of me playing every Sunday at Scissor Bills. Yeah, right. It's crazy how time flies. It's, it's the single best gig in the world. Guess, um, how many, guess how many of those I was able to attend on a school night? Uh, 0. 0.0. 0. But this week, yeah. I will definitely uh, be in tune. Actually, when we post this show, you will be playing um, as we post this show on Sunday night at 7. So I look forward to hearing that. And that's sort of... I'll, I'll have wrapped up by then. Hopefully people tune in. Over 2,000 views last week. Awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. All right, next. Uh, it was one. unbelievable. So, so yeah. I'll play... Um, it's a tune I wrote a long time ago. It came out on the Riot Act. Uh, album that we put out a couple of years back local band local band <coughs> ah, excuse me um yeah we were gonna have a show in april we we're gonna do a big surprise but uh, unfortunately uh, that's not gonna happen but anyway i fucked that one up too that's good
awesome. Another time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Love that, too. Um, one thing I've, I'm always interested in, so I played piano. My parents made me from kindergarten to eighth grade. I quit in eighth grade um, after complaining to my parents for two years. And um, you know how many times I've regretted it since that time? Probably, you know, a million. Um, so my question to you is like, what's your create, like what's the process that you go through to, to feel creative or like to write a song to, maybe there's a, there's a routine you do before you perform. Um, what's that creative process look like for us who quit playing music? <laughs> um, well, first, I'm very particular to not have a routine of any kind. I don't enjoy routine or regiment at all. As far as creating, um, downtime is so important, right? Um, you know, what we're going through right now, um, it's kind of nice to have some free time. Yep. Um, I've been writing like crazy the last couple of weeks. Um, because with boredom inspires uh, creativity. I didn't say that someone did, but yeah. Yeah. Well, and so does emotion too. I mean, uh, it's hard for me to write when I'm in a really good mood. Yeah. Nobody likes happy songs. Those are boring. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I think so anyway. And, uh, so my, my creative process is a lot of just kind of downtime on the couch with the guitar and trying different chords, throwing them together, seeing what works, something that sticks. Something that I've done recently is gotten rid of a notebook. And I used to be so adamant to anybody who was kind of coming up, like, get a notebook, write down all your ideas. My philosophy now is if it's really good, it's gonna stick with you. Cool. Um, so if you went through any of my old notebooks, it's just full of bad ideas, <laughs> you know, it's like. Well, bad ideas maybe at the time, but you might want to go back, you know. If sure. And, and th no, there's some good stuff in there that ended up being recorded or whatever, but it's the stuff that sticks with you. You know, it, it's kind of, it kind of shows itself to be good because you can't get rid of it. Um, so right now, having the band, Damn It, Lauren, and The Well, check us out. Yeah. Spotify, all that stuff. Spotify. Well, Psych Spotify. Rock. Spotify. We're, we're high tech, baby. That's like, that's like the, what Warner Brothers was now. That's like the new Warner Brothers. I mean, that's like you got a record at, you got a, you got a gig if you're on Spotify. Well, it makes it real easy to be DIY. You know, we don't have to get anybody else involved in our music. And right. um, so, you know, the process right now, actually, we're doing this just today. So the last couple of weeks, I've been on guitar in hand pretty much constantly threw together what I thought could turn into a song. And I just recorded on my phone, a chord progression, a couple chord progressions, okay. verse, chorus, bridge, outro. And I sent it to the band, uh, Lauren Jackson, Benny Mocked, Casey Foley, um, just to see if I get a response. And it's kind of the same thing too. If they like it, they'll tell me. And if they don't, they'll tell me that too. Of, I just don't hear a song here, you know? Yeah, so that brings up honesty, I guess. Uh, two other words I was thinking about music is honesty. Uh, three words. Vulnerability and then healing. And I, I feel like recently music has become, in our house, um, with in-schooling, uh, distance learning, distance teaching, in between those times, Elijah and I have been like, listening to a lot of music. I feel like music yeah. heals. Um, as, a, as a musician, you must feel... Uh, as any artist does, when you get on stage, you're very vulnerable. Um, you know, just make mistakes, uh, sing the wrong lyric, play the wrong chord. What do those words, any of those words, vulnerability, honest, or healing have to do, you know, with your music? Um, vulnerability does not stand out to me. Okay. There's no place I'd rather be than on stage. Awesome. And I don't care if I hit a wrong note or um, say the wrong line. That really doesn't matter. Cool. Um, but, you know, I've been doing this a long time now, you know. So I'm comfortable doing that. I don't care about mistakes or anything like that. Um, and I don't really care about lyrics, like I said. <laughs> you know, you can, if you like them, cool. If you don't, I don't care. Um, 
but healing, man, these last couple of weeks, you know, especially on social media, there's been so much music and right. it's so great to have it accessible. People making so many live feeds and shows available and old shows from years ago, they're just posting them and yeah. people doing stuff from their living room, uh, you know, all that stuff. And, and, and like in Sunday, 2000 people tuning into a stumpy Sunday show. That's never happened, you know? And it's, well, people, yeah, well, you know, it's, Pretty it's awesome. part escapism. It's part healing. It's part, you know, fun. It's silver linings. It's like a say that again. A silver lining of, of of what's going on right now. We're not going to say the c word, but it is. Right. You know, music is a right. silver lining. This this creativity that you've been speaking about, like people are able to just post shows, and we're going to list some of those in a little bit. But like silver linings if we can we can continue to look for those silver linings and and you know elijah sat down and plaque this piano without being prompted the other day to us that's a silver lining like usually it's yeah buddy you got to practice <laughs> right, right. sat down and ripped out stuff his song is high hopes right now and and canon and d so he's working on those two right now and oh very nice he just worked on it without and he and he sat there for more than 10 minutes, which is, is huge for us. It was like 30, 30 minutes. So I guess silver linings um, brings me segue into our last little topic before we hear your last song. But uh, as a sports fan and, and yeah. a fan of the greatest sports teams in the history of, of the world. That's uh, right. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, how do you relate? Is there a connection between music and sports? And if so, where do you see that uh, come to fruition? And what are your thoughts on, on sports and music? Energy. I think that's where they intersect. Um, you know, people get hyped up with music before a game. Uh, you get the crowd hyped up with music in the game. Um, you celebrate with music after the game. I see that as, a, as an intersection, um, just with energy. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere. It, it literally is. Um, yeah. Cool. Let's, uh, let's go into your third song here. Um, really appreciate this afternoon with you. And, um, this was awesome. Again, this was our inaugural show. Those of you who, if you tune in, they're going to be up on uh, our YouTube channel called radio big sky. Um, we're just, this is the tuned up. This is tuned up. Is that what this is called? called? Tuned up in Big Sky. On, <laughs> uh, we've got a couple other different shows people can check out, but this is about you today. So let's uh, turn to that last song and um, then we'll have some closing words. Okay. Um, trying to think what to do here. Um, I had a couple different ideas. Um, any thoughts on your end? Breather. <laughs> First time I've heard someone yell that at me. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my music changes all the time. If I'm in the truck, I just listen to pop. If I'm on my own and I'm in a different mood, I'm usually listening to widespread panic, fish, grateful dead. Uh, I, I also have this mood where I listen to Sturgill. I listen to uh, Martin yep. Sexton. Martin Sexton makes me feel like I'm whole again. You know, it goes back to this healing part. Um, you know, I, some of my other favorites just stand out are like Jonah Smith. And, uh, you know, I really like every kind of music. So I, it, when you put me on the spot like that, like I've been putting you on the spot, it's hard for me to play. <laughs> to play it so you play what you feel is right, and that's going to take me out today. You know, it's funny. There used to be a bartender at Milky's. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, um, he deserted us. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what happened to him. He ran away. Oh man. It was really sad. But uh he would uh he'd have football on every you know every Sunday and at halftime he put on the dead. I heard about I that. I really enjoyed that. Halftime Grateful Dead show. Oh, it was the best. Whatever happened to that guy? I don't know. I don't know either. He grew up. Or not. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna play a tune uh, I've never recorded. This was uh, my attempt at a love song many years ago, um, where I did kind of like the lyrics. Um, I like uh, I like lyrics to be humorous and have meaning. Kind of like movies. Those are my favorite movies that are funny and and are kind of deep. 
So uh, I don't really ever play this out, never recorded it. So uh, this will be a tuned up exclusive. Tuned up exclusive. Yes, sir. It. at its best and uh, most. And we're going to lose our recording time soon. Brian, okay. I would like to thank you for being our first tuned in and Big Sky guest. Yeah. Um, next week, we're going to look at Kevin Fabozzi. Obi-Wan Fabozzi, my Jedi master. Don't forget, folks out there, if you love music like we all do, there's places you can see Stumpy on Sunday at, on Facebook. That's right. Oh, um, Widespread Panic on Sunday nights as well. You oh. can watch it. Uh, it's called Never Miss a Sunday Show on Nugs.net. Uh, Fish is doing a dinner and a movie on Tuesdays at 6.30 uh, on Fish's Facebook page. Otherwise, check out your favorite musicians near and far on your local Instagram, Twitch, Facebook, whatever it is, social media outlets. And support uh, them on Venmo if you can. And support them on Venmo. Thank you. I get a Thank fist, you. fist pump up there. I don't know if you can do a fist pump down. I think there you're you go. Yeah, my screen's you're above me in my screen. I don't know where you're at, but <laughs> um Stumpy, always good to see you. And uh let's get together and uh, do something. I guess we gotta do it virtually though, from here yeah. on a little bit. And uh we are big sky, we will overcome this and the music's gonna help us in any any way we can. Yes, sir. Join us, tell your uh, roommate, appreciate you uh taking time out of your day to join us. I will let her know. Um, it's great to see you. Love you, my brother. Hey, love you, JJ. Thanks so much for having me, man. This is awesome. I'll be tuning in every Sunday night. Awesome. 7 p.m. Go Birds. <laughs>